fight to reduce maternal deaths is a high priority for government, but when maternal deaths are a result of a high adolescent pregnancy rate, it becomes more difficult for authorities. So what else should be done? Mirrain Singo gives us more in the following report. A 14-year-old girl gave birth to twins, and two weeks later she died. It was both shocking and sad. On Tuesday, the man responsible for raping and impregnating the girl was arrested. But the damage had already been done. A young life gone too soon, and this may not be the last. About 75 kilometers northeast from the capital, the Murewa community is mourning the death of Yeukai. In Bekin Harare, the government and its partners are deliberating on how to protect such girls. We want to use that information that we have uh, received from this research the recommendations, how are they going to shape up our programming, our interventions, to make sure that we have targeted and specific interventions. Adolescent pregnancy rate in Zimbabwe is high, and nearly one in ten adolescents giving birth every year. What does that represent? What does that represent? And what commensurate and corresponding interventions can we put in place to address it in line with that? That's what I'll respond to that, Major. We need further mining of this broad data that has been presented to us this Morning. Out of the 1,532 maternal deaths recorded in Zimbabwe between 2019 and 2022, close to 400 deaths were from young girls. We are seeing uh, in Zimbabwe, we are still battling uh, adolescent pregnancy and also the COVID pandemic has contributed significantly to the upsurge in the number of adolescents falling pregnant. Uh, the fact that adolescents were out of school for prolonged periods, um, for a prolonged period contributed. The child president believes the government should do more to save young girls. This person knew that it was wrong to, to, to indulge in sexual activity with this child, but the community kept quiet. We are seeing that the problems begin within the community. They actually begin within the families because the family had a family meeting and they decided to keep this issue under family wraps. Every day that passes is another window for another teen getting pregnant. Should the country continue to wait and fail these girls? The figures we've heard about today about adolescent pregnancies are a collective failure. We have failed the young women in Zimbabwe, but we can change that and we must do so. Today's event is a call for action. We need passion and we need to be driven by a collective shame of the state of affairs for young women in this country and do something about it. Real ideas are discussed here. But the rape cases and abuse take place behind closed doors. Authorities can only push for the implementation of the country's laws. But the responsibility lies within every adult to ensure the future of these young ones is safeguarded. For ZTN Prime, I am Mary Ryan Singh. We now cross over to child protection lawyer Maxine Chisweto to discuss the issue further. Now, Maxine, good evening. Thank you for joining us on News Plus. There have been about 400 deaths of underage girls while giving birth from between 2019 and 2022, which is clearly a very big number. Can this be changed? Thank you so much for that question. You know, the United Nations Population Fund tells us that someone is twice as likely to die um, if they give birth and they're under the age of 18. So first and foremost, to just comment on what you just said, 400 deaths in the space of a year um, is an astronomical figure, and that should shock us all as Zimbabweans. And as to the second part of this question, can this be changed? Absolutely. But change can only come by two things. First and foremost, change can come by changing the attitude of perpetrators. And by perpetrators, I mean everybody. I mean parents, I mean the community, and I mean the people that we're marrying these girls off to, or the people who are sleeping with these girls. And then secondly, change can come by changing the attitudes of the girls. This means that girls must be empowered to be able to know um, what sex means, what, sick, what consequences can come through sex, what consequences can come through marriage. Um, a lot of the times when you look at uh, girls who get married off early, for example, you know, one in three girls in Zimbabwe is married before um, the age of 18. Some of it is poverty. Some of it is just attitude. 
So there are things as communities that we need to unlearn and relearn, and we need to be able to empower girls. And looking at legislation, Maxine, will the aligning of the age of consent help in ensuring that perhaps pregnancy among underage girls is reduced? The simple answer to this is yes. Raising the age of consent to 18 will actually help us reduce um, pregnancy of underage girls. But before I get there, I'd like us to also understand why the age of 18. Under the Convention of the Rights of the Child, to which Zimbabwe is a state party to, so this means that Zimbabwe has agreed to the things in the Convention um, of the Rights of the Child, any person under the age of 18 is considered a child. So this idea was us um, agreeing with our international partners that truly someone who is below the 18, uh, age of 18 isn't mentally, emotionally, physically um, developed enough to undergo certain things. But then once again, when we look at the law, we shouldn't look at the law in a silo. The law only works as far as people allow it to work. So um, aligning this age of consent law will only go as far as people are willing to change their attitudes um, in regard to children under the age of 18. We must be diligent in protecting the girl child. We must be aware that mwana mwana. So in our communities, in our families, we should be educating each other. We should be educating children, not only girl children, but even boy children, to know that how to handle their counterparts, their peers. How do you play with your peers? So it is a thing that needs to work in conjunction with other things. The law, coupled with our attitude, coupled with our diligence in protecting children, that's what's going to reduce underage pregnancy. And finally, before you go, in your view, will stiffer sentences be able to reduce cases of adults that engage in sex with underage girls? You know, when it comes to stiffer sentences, um, stiffer sentences are not always a deterrent because every time someone commits a crime, they know of the consequence that's there. But is their belief, is their attitude, is their whole? What Kuti, should I do this or should I not do this? So, in terms of reducing um, sex with underage girls, again, it hinges, it all goes back to beliefs and attitudes. It goes back to how we are raised. It goes back to us seeing that mwana, mwana. Um, there is no reason why an adult male should ever be having sex with an underage girl. That point blank is pedophilia. And that in itself is a crime. So to just go back, no stiffer sentences will not reduce um, cases of adults engaging in sex with underage girls. Ipapwe papopa ZTN Prime, DSTV Channel 294, the place to be.